Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be answering a few of your questions which I put in a little box on Instagram stories and just asked you to ask me anything. I thought now that I've done my best and worst like purchases and products of 2020 and we've done our new year content, I thought I would start afresh with a little Q&A for you guys because a lot of you around here are new and I forget sometimes that not everyone knows everything. Some of you that have been subscribed for a long time might already know the answers to these questions but even when I watch YouTube as I love I still don't mind watching them talk about the same things that I already know if anything it makes me feel really smug because I'm like yeah I knew that mm -hmm. so that is what we are going to be doing today and this is also like stage one in me practicing like opening up again and being more personal on YouTube because the past couple of years I've like retreated like a little clam into my shell and just not really wanted to share very much and I actually don't enjoy being like that is like a defense mechanism but i don't like it so i'm going to start off by just literally addressing the basics if you're new here if you stumbled across this video if you literally subscribed last week hello my name is susie i am 20 29 i was about to tell you i was 28 and that would be a lie i'm 29 i live in brighton in the uk which is just south of london just south like it's directly south it's on the sea and clearly geography is not my strong point i am fairly bright i swear i live in this house i have a little dog called nala she is a pomeranian chihuahua cross and i have a boyfriend called ryan who there are a lot of questions about in this q a it makes me oddly nervous like i actually am like remember to breathe <laughs> i love how you've been going natural with your nails lately are you over the long acrylics so for anyone that doesn't know i used to have really long nails pre-covid i was literally in my nail salon like every three weeks having them redone sometimes a bit more often if i had like shoots or anything where they needed to be a specific look some more natural glittery you name it i was in there having it done it was my time every three weeks to just go and spend like an hour or so just being a little bit pampered and it was just my favorite thing sometimes i wonder if i actually enjoyed more of the creative like deciding on the nail design and the actual pamper time more than the actual nails but yeah after we got locked down i will link the videos because there were whole videos where i was like trying to do my at home acrylics and all of that and it was just it was really not for me so in the end i ended up ripping off the acrylics that i had done and now we just have normal normal nails i have actually started painting them with a rimmel polish i'll try and link it in the info box i really really rate it i love it so i use quite a few coats and then the top coat from the range and that has been me me and my nails and i'm really enjoying it actually i enjoy them not being the focus so much in a video i do get annoyed when my natural nails break but actually i've been keeping them slightly shorter sometimes i like it when they grow out but i get really annoyed when they break off which they did literally new year's day that was the welcome gift that 2021 gave me mood for 2021 aspirations anything you'd like to see change this year i briefly touched on this before christmas i was having a slight breakdown and we were at the end of vlogmas so i kind of like let my feelings out slightly in a very controlled way but if you've watched that video what i'm about to say will probably be no surprise but what i'm kind of like aiming for in 2021 is just a very balanced year i almost like achieved this the lockdown summer of 2020 everything was very balanced for me like it was all still very much up in the air and we were all processing a lot of things and there was so much going on in the world and because of that my actual like personal life what i could control became really beautifully balanced like i was still working but i was having like lots of time to do like gardening and like lovely things and like lots of exercise lots of really healthy food and i think that was like my peak happiness in 2020 and as soon as the uk attempted to go back to normal in like september that was when i started to become really unhappy because we almost lost that balance and because the year had been so crazy and you just kind of have to take all of the work and the craziness as it comes when you work for yourself i really lost that balance over september october november december and that's a long period of time to not have a very balanced life for so my aim for this year is just to try and maintain that balance but like the whole year round like more time off but like working really smart when i am working so that everything i'm still doing Doing the same amount but just taking more time for myself i feel like i really need that for my mental headspace and for my like general well-being as well i think that was something i really prioritized at the beginning of lockdown because we were also health focused because obviously we were in a pandemic and that's definitely a focus that i want to keep and just have a really nice routine on a day-to-day -day basis and factor in more like things that i really love because sometimes i focus so much on work and my daily like tasks at hand that i just kind of like push myself to the side and get everything done that I need to get done and it's great but 
I am just left feeling so flat by like 3 p.m. And really that's a very early stage in the day to be like falling flat at when I'm in the position that I am where like I don't have children, I get like a good amount of sleep and I like I shouldn't be falling that flat at 3 p.m. And I think it's just because I'm not pacing myself well enough. So this year I just want to have a really nice like pace to my life and it might mean being really controlled in the beginning because it doesn't come very naturally but hopefully over time that'll become a real like solid habit and I won't even have to think about it. My life will just adjust and be at a really lovely pace. Random, but how do you make your vegan hot chocolate? It looks delicious. So I'm, I'm often drinking hot chocolates in the vlogs if you don't watch the vlogs. I literally get the Oatly chocolate milk and I stick it in the microwave for about two minutes 30, two minutes 20. There's a fine line between it like going overboard on like a 900 what setting that kind of vibe do you use rose gold Ro rose gold is one of the hardest things for me to say do you use rose gold silver and gold earrings at the same time no i actually don't i wear gold and the occasional bit of rose gold but they're not like a really pinky rose gold so it's kind of hard to tell these little ones here the opals they're actually a rose gold back but you can't really tell these ones are rose gold Oh, those are also rose gold. And I believe my Maria Tash ones are, I think they're rose gold because the, the Maria Tash gold is very, very, very yellow by my memory, but their rose gold is actually just like a warm gold. And I really like that. It's a very versatile kind of rose gold. So it just kind of works whether I'm wearing, like if I were to wear, I would never really wear a silver earring, but if I were to wear a silver earring, it works. But if I wear gold in my main little hole, it works as well. Who's your fashion inspiration? I am always pinteresting images of Hailey Bieber, although I don't feel like her style translate like, like you wouldn't look at my style and immediately think Hailey Bieber with every single outfit. I also love like Emily Ratajkowski, like any street style that you see like in New York. I like, I live for like Emily Ratajkowski being packed with her dog in New York. It's just like my favorite thing. Rosie Huntington Whiteley, for sure. I love her style so much. I'm always like screenshotting any of her stories and saving them for later. I think that's about it. Those are like the three like public people that I'm like really like obsessed with their style. By the way, I'm saying like a lot at the moment. I've forgotten how to speak over the Christmas period. So you're just gonna have to bear with me whilst I get back into learning how to speak to camera and not just rhyme. Sometimes we just use words with each other that I don't actually think are words and like sentences, but we know what the other person means. Lockdown is actually ruining me in terms of being able to speak to people. There's a lot of questions about how do I motivate myself? And I have to say in my position, if you aren't motivated, your bills aren't being paid. So that is like the key motivation. Being self-employed, you either have to have like a fire under your ass permanently or someone else funding your life. How's your skin doing now? Did you find the cause? So I'm gonna say this and I have to like, obviously say I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not a skin specialist, but what I did do was keep a really close eye on like my lifestyle and how it was affecting my skin over the course of like well over six months. And it got to the point in December where I'd had like a year of certain things in my life happening and then being able to like attribute that to bad skin so i'm fairly confident but i don't know the exact like scientific like ins and outs of why but a lot of you will know if you've been watching my videos for a long time that i have had really regular periods for like this is so tmi i think it's coming up to nearly two years no it started it started in april 2018 it was really like slow to start off with just like here and there and then it just got worse and worse and worse and worse to the point where in 2020 it was like every two weeks like clockwork and as we got to december i had like a full year of having really like been dealing with that fully and i could kind of see the months where occasionally it didn't happen and i could tell in those months what i'd been doing or not doing and i could also see that when i had the period that i shouldn't have been having my face was just like exploding this is such a weird explanation i don't really know how else to explain it but basically the period that i shouldn't have been having the one that was like irregular was causing real like crazy cystic acne on my face and the months that i didn't have that i didn't have crazy breakouts either and those months were months where i hadn't been exercising i'm gonna say heavily because i did used to exercise a lot i have really like called it now and this isn't like a <laughs> this i do not want this to be an advert for like not exercising because exercise is so important i still do exercise but it's not as intense as maybe it has been and i don't know if it's the heavy exercise or it's being in a calorie deficit so it's really hard for me to pinpoint exactly so i have kind of scaled it back and i'm doing like shorter lighter walks and more yoga and stuff like that and my skin is doing really well so i'm going to say it was heavy exercise because I actually when i look back at my exercise routine was very intense. I also started to move over to a more plant-based diet at the end of last year, I'm gonna say, which helped my forehead breakouts because down here, 
and up here are two completely different like zones face mapping is like a legit thing but mine doesn't work in the exact way because i feel like intolerances are actually not meant to come out here if my memory is right and up here is dairy it's not an intolerance i have taken like an intolerance test and it didn't like flare up at all but anything dairy so whether it's like milk chocolate now cheese and actual dairy tends to like come out or if i have like crisps or anything really oily that comes out on my forehead but down here which is where all of my scarring was was like big hormonal like cystic acne and it was just scarring and it was awful and those are two very different causes like if i have dairy i know i'm gonna get a spot up here and at the moment if i exercise too heavily and i have like a second period i know like i literally can pinpoint it two days later i will have a huge spot on my cheek so yeah that is where i am at honestly i really wanted it to just be dairy and just like cut dairy out and then life would be fine but actually i do need to be a little bit more mindful of like having a balanced life again coming back to my aim for this year is to have a more balanced life and so far so good there are quite a lot of people asking why do you and ryan not live together and i think that's such a weird question because we haven't actually been together that long we haven't even been together for two years yet so for us to live together we're both self-employed so if you don't know ryan produces music i make youtube videos i do that full time and i've been doing that full time since 2000 and December 2014. So Ryan had already bought his house, I think just before we met. And for us to live together, it doesn't really have like the right amount of bedrooms for us to both have like a decent kind of like office space. So it just would have been a little bit awkward, especially because we hadn't been together that long for me to move in there. So really it just made sense that, you know, I buy a house and we don't like officially live together yet but i think it's a really lovely problem to have and it's something that we are very fortunate to be in this situation so yeah we're going to make it work kind of with our own properties for as long as we feel is right and then eventually we'll live together and yeah i'm gonna move on now because i feel like i've talked for so long and i don't know why questions about me and ryan make me because i'm so like actually very private even though i let you into my house on like a daily basis it makes me really nervous so <laughs> how would you describe your home style how has it changed over the years so my home style literally changes with every single property i live in a lot of the furniture stays the same i like to have furniture that is quite versatile so it works in different spaces but i think more the accessories and like the lighting and certain aspects of the furniture kind of get switched up depending on the property but yeah i firmly believe in kind of like decorating to match a property so with the way my houses have looked or apartments or whatever like i had kind of like georgian house that i lived in a few years back and i always wanted it to kind of like be like when you walked in from the outside you got what you were expecting if that makes sense and with this house like i want the inside to kind of like when you walk in to be like oh yeah this makes sense with what i'm seeing outside and like with the front i kind of like try and have little elements that match up to the back so like keeping the plants the same as well so everything has like fluidity so with this house i originally really wanted like a villa kind of feel to it. it was like very serene very calming but my one issue with that was always that it just didn't really match the front of the house and since doing my office kind of makeover i love that room so much and i just sit in there and i'm like i want every room in my house to feel that way i just want to be able to add to the house but not because i have to because i want to will you keep your hair short or are you going to grow it out let's talk about my hair at the moment right <laughs> this will get rid of my any anxiety about talking on camera right now because i could talk about my hair for days at the moment i literally look like i could have been filming on the same day and just changing my top over and over because i've literally looked the same for the past three videos i've been styling it like this so much recently because it is the most awkward length so my last haircut was the end of september and really like with the bob that i had it needs cutting kind of like every six to eight weeks so i am well overdue i just don't feel like any hairstyle that requires any kind of maintenance is right for the current environment and i'm so over like just desperately needing a haircut i'd rather at this point i'd rather just let it grow to about here and let it grow and be able to do like some really lovely like wavy hairstyles because i don't enjoy my face is quite round i don't enjoy having waves up here i prefer them to be down here and to keep this bit quite sleek i used to have great hair so i'm just really looking forward to hopefully it growing back like that because it is so thick and so crazy healthy right now so yeah very much looking forward to that i would like to have it colored again though because it's it's just in need you know do you feel pressured because of your age about traditional things i hate it i roll emoji i actually don't because no part of my life really has been particularly traditional basically since i left school i haven't done things the way that i was expected to do and sometimes you know when i decided not to go to university my my parents actually my dad my mum was very zen surprisingly my dad was like 
really trying to hold in you could just see like his little bald head getting red every time he thought about the fact that I had decided not to go to uni and I think since that point it was just quite clear that I wasn't doing things the way anyone expected me to do them. No one has any expectations because no one can be quite certain what I'm going to decide to do next. Your favourite place in the States? I really like New York because I'm a classic basic human being like that but I also got stuck in Denver in 2019 and I loved I love Denver, it was so cool. I also really love Miami and I like LA. What is your best luxury purchase of all time? That's really difficult, but I would say probably like the Chanel Boy or the Chanel Classic Flap just because they are such classics. They, I will never really want to sell them, but if I did, I also find it really satisfying that the prices just go up and up and up. Like, where does it stop, really, with the inflation of those bags? I can't even think about, like, in 10 years what the prices of those bags are going to be. So, yeah, I find that really satisfying, but obviously not at the point when you're buying the bag, if that makes sense. That being said, my dual book tote, I still look at it and I just think it's a work of art, so that one's probably the runner-up. Though the resale value I don't feel like is quite as good on that one. If it was a more unique design, it probably would be slightly better. Did you go to university? What did you study? How did you get to where you are now? I'm gonna do a whole career story. I've done a video on my university, not going to university experience, but I filmed that in like 2014. And obviously that was so long ago now. And I feel like there's a lot of things that when I look back, and when I look back at that video that I'm like, mm, but you forgot to mention this, or actually now in hindsight, I really see how this played into this. So I think what I'm gonna do is an update on that video because I think that would be really useful. And I think it's really important to have almost like young me and my view on it, but also like slightly older me and the things that I've learned since, but also an update on my career because I don't know why I'm doing that with career, but also an update on that because obviously when I started out, people were like, oh, but YouTube won't last like the next couple of years and blah, blah, blah. Like people really liked to tell me that in the comments. So the fact that we are six years down the line into me doing it full time, like YouTube has been like around in a job for about a decade now. I feel like it's important to update if that makes sense. But yeah, I didn't go to university, so I didn't really study anything. But at college I did health, social care and early years studies and psychology. I got A's in health and social care and a C in psychology because my coursework was fab and my exams never are. What is your opinion on the COVID vaccine and will you take it? I can't tell if that's a trick question, but of course I'm gonna take it because it's only gonna work if like the majority of people take it. I know some people are a bit weird about vaccinating and I just, I don't get it. Ryan, Ryan. <laughs> Hello. There's lots of people asking how we met and I know you love telling this story so I was wondering if you want to tell it. So Ryan is here but he's just gonna... Wait. <laughs> so we originally met at school and I really like Ryan and I used to talk to him every night on MSN and I asked him out and he said no and ran away. Why? <laughs> I that was mostly just because I was very shy. Yeah, and then we didn't really speak anymore. And then, God, like 10, a decade later, I'm swiping through Tinder because I'd had literally yet another like disappointing romantic experience. And I was just like, it's this or cats. Then you followed me on Instagram and then I DM'd you because I scrolled down and realized that everyone had done the 10 year challenge. And I was like, I really know this person because I didn't actually recognize Ryan when we swiped on each other. And I wasn't even gonna message you. The glow up is real. Would you like to have kids? If so, does it stress you out? When is the right time? Yeah. It stresses me out. Just thinking about it. I was just doing some work on my laptop and now I'm doing this. You're more excited. Yeah, I know that, that I definitely I want kids. Yeah. Not like particularly soon, but. Not that I definitely don't want kids, but I'm just like, you're like, oh yeah, that would be so nice. Yeah, and I'm like. I'm probably more excited for it. Will it? Will it? What attracted you to Ryan? He makes lunches. <laughs> he makes strange faces. Um, no, he's very kind. I like the fact that you're a little bit shy as well because it just like is quite endearing. Have you gone vegan and is it sustainable for your lifestyle? Yes, because yeah, it's definitely sustainable for me when uh, Ryan cooks lots of lovely vegan food. Just me cooking is sustainable for you. <laughs> I cook. I'm cooking tonight True. and I cooked. What else did I cooked recently? Mm. I think I was good at cooking before, but you've made me more like adventurous. Like when you came home the other night and you thought we were having jacket potatoes and I was making a butternut mac mm, and cheese. It was like, oh. Did you find that you and Ryan just clicked or did you take it slow? Were there any awkward bits? Like the entire first day I was the most awkward human being in the world. So, and actually the first like month of us going out, I was just the most awkward human being. 
Because I was so nervous. I feel like I was the same, so I didn't notice it from you. Because we're both thinking about how nervous yeah. we both are. Yeah. That's the one trick of if you're feeling anxious, don't worry, because everyone else is just like a big ball of worrying about themselves. I don't think anything like escalated very quickly. I feel like I pretty much lived with you quite quickly. Yeah, but that was because your kitchen was being redone. Yeah. And then COVID, like it was literally like Ryan's well, kitchen. Well, obviously I took... wanted to spend time with you as well. But yeah, I probably but wouldn't have like no, essentially if... lived together if my kitchen wasn't in that state. No, I, I think if that hadn't happened, it would have been COVID. But because your kitchen took longer than it should have done. You so kindly let me come and live with you. I kindly let you live with me so that you didn't have to live <laughs> on a building site. Because Ryan had a wall removed, so it was like chaotic. And then COVID hit and we just kind of thought oh we'll just you know live together solidly for another three weeks and then it was like three months later and we were still couldn't get rid of you you now actually haven't like i just am always you're either always here or i'm always yeah. at yours now yeah i think i've done all of the ryan questions to leave now yes go your time is up thank you bye how is living in Brighton? I need to kind of address this because I think everyone thinks I still live in central Brighton and that I'm like crazy money bags because buying a house in Brighton is like ridiculous. I've moved like slightly out of the area like I still just like it's like a 10 minute drive to get in but just obviously allows me to have a much nicer bigger space to live in. Living in the centre of Brighton it was so noisy and there was just so many nights of like interrupted sleep so yeah. I have moved out and I just, I really love it. It's nice actually because I have one friend that lived in the center of Brighton quite close to me and that was it. So yeah, everyone else, it's actually easier for everyone else even though they're kind of like more like hove. It's easier for everyone else to get to me where I am now. And I have friends that actually live like a five minute walk away and it's just, oh, it's really nice. So many questions on the next home project. And one thing I did want to touch on is that I don't really see myself doing like big home projects for the time being. Like when I moved in, I had the garden to sort and that was like a real big project. I don't really have anything crazy that I'm going to be doing like immediately. Sometimes I think it's nice just to like let something be a journey rather than like one home project after the other. I think sometimes the internet lends us to think that you have to have your house, like if you're renoing or if you're not, you have to have your house done like super, super quickly. And actually I think sometimes it's nice to make something a bit more of a longer journey. That being said, I don't know how long I'm gonna live here for. Like I know I'm probably not gonna be here for like 10 years. I'm definitely not gonna be here for 10 years unless the economy really tanks and I'm just like not willing to lose money on this house, if that makes sense. So a lot of the things I want to do will be done slightly closer together than they would if I had a forever home and I'll probably like drag that out for the longest time, which I think is a really lovely thing to do. But yeah, I think the internet lends us the feeling like it always needs to be what's next. And that's something that I'm really like drumming into myself this year is just, it doesn't have to be what's next as soon as you finish doing something whether it's your daily to-do list your house it doesn't have to be like finish one thing and start doing like another you can just take a moment to savor what you've just done if that makes sense what's your five-year plan personal edition i really don't have one i think i used to nothing i've ever really planned in my life has gone to plan if anything it's always worked out better than i planned it to so i'm just kind of like trusting the universe with my life <laughs> just like please be good to me one thing that i would like to do though is own another property and that's one of the reasons why i don't like go crazy with like saving up to redo spaces that are already fine in this house because i think i'd actually like to invest in a second property so i'd rather slowly save up for that than slowly save up to like redo a bathroom that is fine yeah i'd like to go away for my 30th but because of covid i'm just not really like banking on anything fully and i guess that's trickling into like my five-year plan as well it's just like i don't really know what i'm going to be able to do so i'm just trying to focus on a few things that i actually have control over like saving money for certain things i'd like to get a new car at some point because my lease is going to run up soon how would you spend a day completely alone or oh. this one's a really lovely one it doesn't happen so much anymore because of lockdown when i'm not working like the, say the weekends as an example brian and i will normally kind of like be in the same house together every so often like we do spend a day apart but it just doesn't happen as often due to lockdown because we're obviously just so bored we'd rather spend time with each other than alone if that makes sense if i were having like a full day on my own like i wake up and i'm alone i would make myself a coffee stare out at my garden with a really foggy brain, fill in my like five minute journal, go for a walk or a run, maybe do some yoga after if I was feeling really like energetic, have a shower, put on some makeup, 
get dressed, I would probably watch Gilmore Girls, maybe just like lie on the sofa, watch movies all afternoon, order myself some kind of takeaway. And then when it got to the evening, I would read a book. I'd have like maybe a glass of wine and some cheese and crackers. Then I'd get into bed early <laughs> and carry on reading my book. Yeah, basically just reading and exercising and eating my favorite food. What was the first thing you were excited to buy, install in your new house? There were two. There were the pendant lights for the kitchen because the lights that were there before were these rose gold kind of like cage lights. And I just remember, I almost like didn't put an offer in on this house because when I came in, they took us in through the kitchen at the back of the house. And I just remember looking at those lights and just being so distracted by them and how much I hated them. And it really affected how I saw the entire house. Obviously it didn't help that it was like pouring down with rain the day I viewed the house. So the house was so dark because obviously it was like this lilac-y gray color. It's a much nicer color on a day when it is sunny, but let's face it, in the UK it just doesn't, it's not like that. Also the bathroom ring light mirror thing. I just always kind of knew that that was gonna be the perfect light to have there. And I was so excited to have that installed. It took a little bit longer because it had to be, we've wired it in so that when you turn the bathroom spotlights on, it comes on with them. They were just two of the best purchases I made for the house before we'd literally done anything else. And it just really, changed the spaces like that bathroom went from being like a nice bathroom to like a uh, people walk in and they're like wow and i love that and then people walk in the kitchen they're always like they always just talk about the pendant lights this is a really interesting question and it's how do you keep your independence in a relationship without risking growing apart really when you think about it we're all growing throughout relationships and it is like i said whether you grow together when you grow apart it's just that person has grown and you don't like that version but having independence from them is not going to change that continually having your own separate friends like your own house your own life that's not going to change whether they grow into that person or not and i think sometimes when you are almost like not controlling but when you always have that in mind like what you focus on this is a real motivation monday moment what you focus on flourishes and if you are constantly worried about growing apart from someone you behave in a way that almost causes that to happen you can't force someone to love you and grow with you and all of that. So I think you, if you want to remain very independent, you just need to go with that. And if that person loves you and wants to stay with you, it will just happen. And if they're gonna grow into like a version of themselves that you no longer like, like you grow like this instead of like this, it's gonna happen whether you have an independence from them or not. And I can firmly say that coming from a very long-term relationship where we grew very firmly apart and had spent all of our time together and had literally like very little really independence from each other your independence is not going to make or break that so if you want to keep a part of your life independent then you just do so what advice would you give someone wanting to start saving for their first home i don't know if i saved really the right way being self-employed you kind of get paid in chunks and because i am very anxious with money i would just like not really spend anything at all of what i was being paid i would literally just pay for the things that i needed to pay for and then not really actually spend that that much else and it is very different because if we're being very honest social media over the, like the course of the past few years like I can't say what it's going to be like in the future but I was in it at a point when it was very lucrative if you knew how to do it right and you worked really like you had to work hard money doesn't just pour in if that makes sense but if you're really clever with it it can be very lucrative so I obviously do get paid like a good healthy amount of money and I just wasn't spending it so I kind of just did the saving like in, in a real like backwards way of just like saving because I didn't know what I could spend when I first went full-time and self-employed. I was so used to having like a PAYE job where you knew what you were getting every month and I was so scared because I didn't know what I was going to get every month that I just really reined everything in and I was like okay I just won't spend any money. Whereas I think if you follow someone like Patricia on the break platform she gives you a much better insight into how you can take the money that you are saving and save it smarter. I think she's such a great person to go to for that kind of advice. I'm just anxious with money, but I don't, I wouldn't say I'm good with money, if that makes sense. I think those are two very different things. I think Patricia is very good with money and she's so clever and I really admire her so much, but I wouldn't put myself in that category. What's 
the best thing about being a homeowner. I honestly think we put owning a home up on this pedestal. Like it's really great in terms of like paying money back into your own pocket eventually. It's great in terms of that, but it is really stressful. And I think sometimes people feel a little bit kind of overwhelmed once they've bought a house because there's so often so much to do, so much more than when you rent somewhere. There's so much more that you are responsible for. Like obviously having control over your environment is lovely and knowing that I'm paying into back into my own pocket eventually is great and I really love that. But apart from that, it is very stressful. But yeah, I just wanted to put that out there in case anyone else is feeling like a bit deflated after having bought a house. Like it's a lot of stress. It's great, but I actually don't think it's for everyone. I think there are some people in life that actually like they don't want to be settled. So why would buying a house be right if that makes sense? I don't know. Like I just think maybe it's like actually something we put on people much like having kids as a societal expectation but actually maybe it's not right for everyone i know that it wasn't right for me for years and i'm so glad that i didn't buy a house when i was originally able to i mean i'd be living in a much bigger house because house prices were cheaper and i had a little bit more money to be playing with i am really glad that i actually didn't buy at that point because i would have been so overwhelmed by the pressure of owning my own house or having bought it with someone else that wasn't quite putting in 50 50 and we'd have to like then have big arguments over the type of house and the decor and the doing all of those things together and i can't imagine it would have been one of the worst decisions of my life and i can hands down say that what kind of old lady do you think you'll be i will probably be like the slightly more liberal version of emily from gilmore girls like she is she's goals yeah that kind of like old lady hopefully hopefully that is like really pulled together and hopefully reads a lot of books and lives a really nice life and it's just like got her shiz together that's the kind of old lady i want to be what do you do for work outside of youtube and instagram so i'm just gonna round up with this maybe i'll throw in one last question but i thought i'd just kind of like give a little overview for you guys so yeah youtube and instagram and blog and like being online being an influencer i hate that word it's one of those words that you shouldn't be able to say about yourself being an online creator there we go has been my job for six years now i started when i was i think 19 or 20. i think this year is officially in july is my decade on youtube which is i had um, a tumblr blog since i was maybe about 15 so i've kind of been on the internet a long time i see youtube as like my main main job because there are so many of you here but also it's the content that i love to create i'm much more of a talker than someone that takes like beautiful Instagram pictures. I really enjoy just like posting my outfits to Instagram and it's obviously still a big part of what I do, but it's almost like a segue off of here. Like I like to treat this space as like my main platform and then everything else kind of like filters off. And in terms of an income from them, I kind of, it's quite evenly split in terms of like brand work between Instagram and YouTube and then I do a little bit on my blog and then I obviously earn money off of the ads on YouTube videos as well. I put out a lot of content, like a lot of organic content, so much organic content and then I do sponsored brand stuff as well. And sometimes I'll create things for brands that go on their platform so it'll be stuff that you won't even really see. I'm currently thinking about what I want to do beyond that and like other things that I'd like to do but it's all just very like I'm going with the flow because COVID you know what does your typical work day look like okay maybe i'll round off with this one so i get up in the morning have my coffee if i'm not filming and i don't like need to film straight away or i'm not filming something lengthy i'll do a walk and then get makeup on start filming so after this i will have to break and have lunch sometimes i work through and it's honestly the worst thing for me like i get to three four o'clock and i'm like my whole body hurts and i need to lie down but yeah i'll have a lunch break and then I'll go to my desk. I'll transfer the footage to Lauren because we obviously don't work in the same four walls right now, which is just like crushing my soul. And then I will speak to my managers. I'll then maybe like do outfit photos, anything that I need to do, like Instagram content, stories, posting to stories. If my brain can attempt it, I'll like start a blog post, but most of my blogs are actually written at like 11 o'clock at night when my creativity actually like kicks in if i have anything sponsored to do i'll try and do it in the afternoon but then there might be other days where i'll not be needing to film a video so i'll do my brand work in the space of that yeah filming takes up the main part of my day and if i'm vlogging it carries on even longer and obviously goes into the evening and stuff like that so yeah i don't have a typical day in terms of like if i'm vlogging because every day will look a bit different because i need to like do things and show you things in the vlog but sit down videos my life becomes much more routine it's been really nice actually to start off the year with a lot of sit down videos because it's allowed me to get back into that routine before i start like jumbling it up with like vlogs and you know mixing my personal life and my work life it can get really messy being a youtuber and like 
that amalgamation of like what is work, what is personal. But yeah, that is kind of what my workday looks like. And depending on how many brand projects there are on and stuff and how much we need to talk about things, sometimes work goes on like later into the evening, but I try and always finish by six. If I can finish by five, I am bawling. Okay. I think that is it. I hope you enjoyed catching up with me. If you have any questions that I haven't answered, leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to them. There were lots on like my workout routines at the moment and stuff like that, which I'm just like not really doing. So hopefully you can understand by what I've said in the video, why some of your questions, if you posted a question to the box, haven't been answered. And yeah, I hope you have enjoyed catching up. If you are new here, I hope you've learned a little bit more about me and what I do and I hope you stick around. Thank you for spending some time with me today and I will see you guys again in my next video. Love you, bye. I've also just realized that we have had a real hair issue this entire video. I am so sorry. This is one of the reasons why short hair is not a winner. Love you, bye. <laughs>